Hello my soccer universe. Let's look at another AFCON update. The group stage is history and I'm wearing my Black Stars jersey in red. Um, however, yesterday they were not playing in red, but it was still a nice one. We'll talk about that soon. Um, we actually start with group F because that was the first group uh, where we had um, uh, action. Well, actually, <laughs> it is every up sometimes a little bit of a strong word. Um, the situation was as follows that uh, Guinea-Bissau played Ghana and needed a win to qualify. Ghana themselves needed at least a draw to make sure of qualification. A uh, win would uh, see them challenge for the top spot. Um, and similar, Benin and Cameroon, if they play out a draw, this would actually be enough for Benin to uh, move uh, move, move on while Cameroon needs the win to secure the top spot. Um, Benin Cameroon was actually a nice color matchup. Uh, Benin playing in their yellow umbro jerseys with all these uh, green and red specks. It's, it's a nice one to look at. And Cameroon almost played in their uh, entire home kit, except they had played, of course, with the red socks because the yellow would have clashed with um, uh, Benin. And Cameroon had a good start, had 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 a few shots, but then the game slowed considerably. Uh, in Suez, the other game, uh, Guinea Bissau played in their red kit uh, with, I think it's a palm tree that comes in there. Uh, looks actually uh, quite in interesting, but I don't necessarily like the Puma template with the white shoulder uh, stripes. Ghana in their white away kit, although I have to say this one looks really nice with the flag uh, trim and the black star. If that would have been available, I might have had... I think I still would have chosen this one just because of the craziness. But I have to uh, say that uh, that kit looks really, really nice and classy. Um, and in that game... Guinea Bissau drew first blood by, I think, Mendes, uh, taking a shot that uh, Richard of Ofori almost botches, but gets a hand on it and it hits the bar. Uh, but in the, I think, a third, 31st, Jordan Ayo gets a chance and he hits the post. So there was some action in that game, but uh, both games are nil-nil at the half. Uh, in the second half, just right after kickoff, Jordan Ayo uh, gets the ball and move somehow past the defender. Uh, you, he actually tried to do a trick on him, but it completely failed. But he gets past him and gets a clear shot on goal, uh, and makes it one nil for Ghana, which at this point puts them within a goal of the group lead because Cameroon and um, Benin still were at a nil nil. Um, in the following sequence, Guinea Bissau, and the, it was the game that I, I was following, really went for the equalizer because they needed this win. They went for the equalizer, they uh, hit the post again, then after a corner kick, Ofori completely misjudged uh, the, the ball, and it again, he gets a touch, it hits the bar, uh, so really bad luck for Guinea Bissau. Then um, it was... Uh, um, a counter-attack, think of Ayu, and then um, uh, Kwabena gets the ball to Party, who pulls puts in the net for, to make it 2-0 for Ghana, which at this point puts Ghana in the lead of Group F. Uh, and the lead of Group F basically means that instead of playing uh, Nigeria, you're actually having a slightly easier uh, route because you're playing only the second place team of Group E and then a matchup Madagascar and whoever would play the uh, potentially the DRC. So uh, getting that was important for Ghana and they even underline it by hitting uh, Jordan Ayo again hits the post and Ghana runs off away a kind of comfortable winner in this one. And then all eyes were on Cameroon against Benin, but it was a dreadful game where there was no real chances. It completely petered out. Cameroon can get, cannot get the win. It ends nil-nil. Uh, I have to say this has to be a letdown for Cameroon because now uh, the group finishes uh, the group seemed good at the beginning, but it was kind of a dud. We have Ghana with five points, Cameroon with five points, 
Ghana, because of more goals scored, uh, goes on. Benin, three with the 2-2, manages to get into the knockout stage ahead of South Africa. Um, and also gets already the fixed spot, as, as you will see in Guinea-Bissau, is out. So um, that means that Benin has already a fixed spot against Morocco. And Cameroon will play Nigeria, which is a pretty big matchup. And Ghana was waiting for the second place team for Group E. It's also meant that in the third place ranking, it was basically down between uh, the third place team of uh, Group E versus South Africa with, uh, with the team that qualifies playing Egypt, kind of rounding out a really loaded lower quadrant in this draw. Those second games pitted, first of all, um, Mali against um, Angola. And this was probably my favorite jersey matchup of uh, the entire tournament. Ango I really like those Angola jerseys. Um, I know they look, look, look a little bit wild, but I think an Angola can get, get away with it. The red with all these circles, yellow, and then a lot of pattering on there. Totally love it. And Mali, the white jerseys are even better. Uh, with this huge eagle uh, and the white, you can really see the flag. This is, to me, the best jersey at the Africa Cup of Nations. In the other game, uh, Mauritania took on Tunisia. Tunisia in all white, Mauritania in all green kit with a little bit of red here and a little bit of yellow. Looked also interesting. You know, those are kits that I love when they, when they, when they play by small, small teams. There's a little bit more to look at there. Um, Mauritania, Tunisia... Tunisia controlled most of it, but only half chances, not really being able to find a breakthrough. Uh, only half chances also kind of for Angola Mali, although there was a huge one in the third minute where uh, a quick passing moved the Angola def uh, the Mali defense wide open. And uh, I think it was Geraldo who gets the ball at the edge, edge of the box, has a free way on goal and makes a shot that is absolutely dreadful. Easy save for Diara. Then Mali has a little bit more of the game, but you know, not really being dangerous until Haidara in the 37th takes a shot from, from a distance. Beautiful shot to make it 1-0 for Mali. And at that point, Angola, who at the beginning of the game had trouble been enough and then was qualified, at that point Angola drops out and South Africa is celebrating. Uh, and also the win... Uh, uh, a lead means that Mali will secure the win in the group. Although the win means you play the Cote d'Ivoire. If you are second in the group, you play Ghana. So mm -hmm. take your pick. Uh, second half starts and very similar picture. Uh, Tunisia cannot find the breakthrough. And Angola really for about 20 minutes really tried to get something against Mala and Mal uh, Mali. Not Mala. And Mali... <laughs> was shaky at the back. I mean, not, not much confidence inducing, but on the other side, they hung on. Angola was a little bit toothless in, in the attack, and actually the biggest chance um, came uh, to Musa Marega uh, late in the game. Mali hangs on to get the win uh, and secure top spot in the group and send South Africa and not Angola into the round of 16. And then it's all down to, to the other game. Will Mauritania get the lucky punch against Tunisia and send Tunisia home, uh, home? Or will Tunisia hang on? Tunisia hangs on. It ends nil-nil. I honestly have to say, Tunisia is a little bit disappointing. Uh, you've got to get a win against Mauritania. So if you look at this final group, we have now um, Mali with seven wins the group. Tunisia only three draws. Three points, Angola two, Mauritania two, both of them are eliminated. Which means we get the following knockout bracket um, in the top quadrant. Uganda, Senegal, and then Morocco, Benin. Um, seems to be a clear Senegal-Morocco matchup. Madagascar, DRC is open. I probably would give even the slight edge to Madagascar, though. The DRC is moving forward. Ghana, Tunisia is a is a match that looks more open than it probably is. Mali, Cote d'Ivoire, 
I would even give the Cote d'Ivoire, the edge here, Algeria, Guinea, Algeria, all Algeria, Nigeria, Cameroon, to me is a toss-up. Uh, and Egypt, South Africa is a clear um, for Egypt. Um, the matches will be played not in this order. It's first Morocco, Benin, Uganda, Senegal, then Nigeria, which is on Friday, then Nigeria, Cameroon, Egypt, South Africa. Those days, that will be an interesting day. Um, Saturday, Sunday, Madagascar, DRC, Algeria, Guinea, Mali, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana, Tunisia round out the fixtures. Well, group stage is over. Wasn't always the greatest games, but the great. The greatest jerseys of the year are always at the AFCON. Anyway, let me know what you thought about uh, all these games and the group stage so far. Drop a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.